Hey everybody, Paul Humiller here at Dream Guitars and welcome to another Tech Chat. These are the short videos we do talking about design elements of guitar or how to care for your guitar. In the past we've done a video about the difference between action and relief and today I want to show you how to adjust relief using the truss rod. So just to review, the relief is nothing more than the curvature in the neck. The neck has to have a little bit of curve so that the fingerboard is out of the way of the arc of the string when the string vibrates. Action is more about the overall level of the string, the height of the string, which is adjusted more from the bone nut and the bone saddle. So today we're talking about the relief, the curvature of the neck. So the first thing you want to do, of course, is evaluate the current relief on the guitar. So how much curvature does it have or not? Um, you can do that a couple of ways. A straight edge is a great one, and you use a shorter one that only goes in the first 12 frets, and usually around the G string or so, and then looking from the side where I am, I can see the gap or not beneath the metal um, straight edge and the tops of the frets. There should be just a bit of relief, um, just a bit of space there. If there's none, you're probably going to have the strings buzzing when they're open and fretted up the neck. Um, if there's too much, it might play cleanly, but it's going to be hard to press down, especially in the middle of the neck. On this Michael Kennedy guitar, the relief was already perfect, but I messed it up for the sake of the video. So let me show you how I'm going to make it right again. Firstly, Michael has this really beautiful magnetic truss rod cover here. So I'm just going to remove that. And that's going to give us access to the truss rod, which has an adjustable nut here. Some guitars, the nut is inside the body here, like on Martin guitars. Um, sometimes they're at the end of the truss rod, uh, at the end of the headstock. You need a really long truss rod, so everyone's a little bit different. But typically, um, they're, aside from dual action truss rods, they're either just one way to tighten, one way to loosen. If you think about the rod, the rod is installed in an arc, so the rod is not straight. The rod is in an arc. So if you straighten the rod, you're pulling the neck down and back, and therefore flattening. If you loosen the rod, you're allowing it to come spring back into an arc and that for creating more relief. So that's the way truss rods work. If you look online, you go to Stumac or something, you'll see pictures of the truss rods for sale and you can see how the bar is actually um, in, a, in a concave curve and that's the way that they're installed in the guitar. So on this guitar, I've already tested the truss rod to make sure that it's free and working. You want to be very careful. Sometimes they're frozen for some reason or another, and you don't want to use force with the truss rod. So I've already tested. I know it's working well, and I can just turn my truss rod a little bit. Usually a half a turn or so is, is all you need. And that's it. I've just made the, the fretboard flatter now, and I can test it, of course, make sure that it's playing good. Feels great, it's buzz free, and that's all I needed. But let me just give you a word of advice. Don't do this unless you're very familiar with guitars. Um, I've seen people actually break truss rods. I've seen the truss rod pop out of the back of the neck. You cannot over tighten a truss rod. They only move a little bit one way or the other, and it's best done by a skilled repair person, or if you have the knowledge to do it yourself. But baby steps, just tiny turns at a time. Make sure you have the right tools for measuring the relief, etc. So just a reminder, relief is all about the curvature of the neck and a very small increments with turning the truss rod and go to a pro if you need help. 